All right, what up, everybody? Welcome to yet another episode of These Corona Times. Thank you for tuning in for episode 42. We don't have a title. I mean, I have three. Four and the two. (laughs) Four and the two. Yes. We do. We have three titles. Hoping with burnout in these corona times. Burnt out in these corona times. Burning, burning, burning out. That's my favorite one. (laughs) That's where I'm at right now. Burnt. (laughs) Three uh, titles just, for, just, just, just to say burnt. Yes, three titles for three different stages. <laughs> I'm against burnt. the word burnt, though. I don't Mom like does not burnt. like the word burnt, but <laughs> hey, we're, we're here. We're burnt, though. We're burnt. It's true. Yeah. It's true. So we're here for it. Uh, okay. We are coming to you live and direct. Um, I don't know when you'll watch this, maybe on a Monday or a Tuesday, but uh, we are definitely recording on a Friday night. So this is odd for us. So, um, you know, if we're a little off. Right, too. We're gonna bring the day. We're gonna bury, blame it on the day. What Simone? For the for the Sabbath keepers, we're gonna get drugs. It's not, it's not a Sabbath. Yet. The sun is still. It up. is Sabbath. No, it ain't. It's not. It's not. Sabbath move with yet. Kentucky. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, my Any son, son is out Sabbath. here. <laughs> I said okay. Sabbath. So only Simone is bringing it. Me and Mark. no, it is this, no. Mm-mm. The sun is still out here, ma'am. The sun is no. like eight thirty. <laughs> well, I'm, we're gonna run into the we're we're on the edges of the Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm looking at this as Vesper, so there. Okay, this is like Vesper. Uh, there we go. Yeah. This okay. Is, this is, this is no, we miss Vesper. Vesper group right now. Yes, we're having a Vesper group right now. So all right. There. Okay. So anyway, I, <laughs> you are tuned in with uh dr simone your girl tiffany and your boy brandon and we want to thank you guys for watching with us for episode 42 you heard all the titles we want to remind you um that you can now catch us on anywhere podcasts are heard spotify Spotify, apple Podcasts. come on come on in the room visit us catch up on all all episodes before this episode so we have one through 41 and by the time you hear this one 42 will be up as well you can listen to all of them whenever you like. You can also watch us on Facebook still on our page at These Corona Times. And we are also on YouTube at These Corona Times. So we, we're just taking over y'all spaces. All the spaces. Hey, can, all the spaces. I, can, I give a, can I give a quick shout out? Sure. All right. I don't do this very often, uh, but I feel like it is, it is important to do it. A big shout out to Tag Media. Uh, and to Definitely. Because, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I... I am not technologically inclined. Uh, I have a fancy phone and I use three features. But, <laughs> but, but you know, Tag Media, which is Tiff, she, you know, has done everything behind the scenes for, uh, for these Corona mm-hmm. times. All the YouTube stuff, all the, she started the Facebook. I'm good once it started. I'm not going to start nothing. And Tiff starts everything. She does, she's, Done all the Spotify stuff. Did that on that? That was a surprise to us. That was not something we were expecting. So, big shout out to Tag Media. If you need any type of website development, any type of social media management, anything like that, Tag Media yes. is uh, is where you need to go. Because she is very mm-hmm. legit. Yep. Thank you. Very true. I appreciate mm-hmm. it. that's the first compliment of 2021, and it's probably gonna be the last one that I get. Oh yeah, it's only it's only once a year. <laughs> is it my turn I think it is all right Mm -hmm. so we do a lot of acknowledgments I don't know why I have the stuff next to the acknowledgments that I have but um (laughs) so let's do this first so one of the things we want to acknowledge is all of the race-based um stress and all the injustice that's been going on the one bright spot we have right now is the fact that we did get a, a guilty verdict in the Derek Chauvin case guilty um guilty on all three counts all, charges. Guilty. Um, all guilty. the charges um I think that at the same very close to when that verdict was being writ was being read that is when Makai Bryant was being shot mm-hmm. right 30 minutes before yeah right and that was in Ohio Columbus Ohio. is that correct yeah. Columbus Ohio um, we also have Dante Wright, who was uh, also murdered um, by a police officer who got her weapons confused, mm. uh, as she says. 
And so that was in Minneapolis as well, Minneapolis, Minnesota as well. So there's a lot going on there. Minneapolis turned into Mississippi, ain't it? I mean, I guess so. Yeah. I guess so. And then there was, there's many incidents. There was another one that happened in North Carolina that I don't know the specific signs. I'm not going to say anything. And that happened like two, maybe two days ago. Um, but we also had, at the time that we got this episode together, there was a situation with a U.S. Army lieutenant who was not killed, but was harassed. I mean, mm-hmm. to the point of having to get out of his car, was confused about what was happening, we had to get on the ground. And this was a, a police officer involved situation as well, but he did not uh, die, of course, but he, you know, definitely, I'm sure is having some us. reactions to that as well. So there's just a lot going on right now. We're going to actually talk about a lot of that next week, mm-hmm. um, but we just wanted to create space to acknowledge all of that. We're all going through it. And that is why uh, self-care is so important. Mm-hmm. And so um, definitely want to ask you all how you're taking care of yourself with all this going on. What have you been doing? <laughs> I'm going to just say I have not been um, taking care of myself. Uh, I actually feel like I've overloaded myself on some of this stuff. I was sharing with um, Brandon Simone the Polos. I'm starting to dream about some of this stuff now. So it's, it's maybe I'm listening or watching too much, or maybe it's just happening too much. I don't know. Cause I don't go searching for some of this stuff. It just pops up on our timelines and on our, on our pages. So I haven't been taking the best care of myself. I'm going to try to do better, but um, not, not too good. Not too good. Hopefully next week mm-hmm. will be better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Me, the, uh, the only thing that I can say that I've done for self care recently, because like Dip, I'm, um, I'm hitting overdrive uh, at work and everything like that. So that's definitely not having a good balance there. But one of the things that I am trying to do is to actively reduce how much of that I'm taking in. So, you know, I have actually like filtered uh, certain words uh, from my timelines and I'm trying not to see it as much. Yes, if I want to go searching for it and, you know, looking at specifics, I can do that. But I'm trying not to look at videos. I'm trying not to, you know, to look at uh, broadcasts that are seemingly 24/7. You know, maybe a little piece here, maybe a little piece there. But I'm really just trying to, all right, taking this time to really move away from it just a little bit. Yeah, um, definitely want to normalize the the dreams and all of that. I think that there there's so so much that we know now about what happens to your to you but symptoms pop up when you share identity with people who are being murdered and just because of the color of their skin when you see that you know you think that could be me that could be my my family member and so a whole host of symptoms can happen headaches you know stomach cramps I mean physical symptoms as well as feeling sad or anxious or what have you and so I think that we've talked a lot about that on the show but Uh, we may get back to it, um, just kind of to dedicate a show specifically to that. But um, in terms of self-care, I think for me, um, just because of, just by virtue of having a kid, I haven't been able to consume as much, although I did consume a lot of the trial at the end. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think that I've been, it's been helpful to be able to talk to you all about it and to share how I've been feeling and to also hear how you all been feeling, because it really does just help to normalize and validate you know, what has been coming up for me. So I think that's a form of self-care because a lot of times we don't talk about it, Mm -hmm. talk about these things. um, But I think Mm -hmm. to talk about it and to just not hold it in is a form of self-care. So I would argue that y'all been doing a little bit, you know, by by expressing. It just doesn't feel Um, like it. (laughs) Right, right. And, uh, you know, I think, I think like what Simone was saying that we, while it's so overwhelming as far as what we're doing, it feels like maybe that little bit of self-care that we are doing is nothing but like an ant to a molehill. Am I using that phrase correctly? Yeah. Uh, and it's just, it seems like it's just so little when we need so much. Mm. And it kind of makes you feel like you're not doing a lot of self-care. So I am going to definitely do a better job of that. I think I think I've got to get back to going to bed earlier which is something that I haven't been doing. I've been actually keeping Tiff and Simone hours lately, and I don't mm-hmm. like that. I do not like going to bed at midnight or even 11, 11.30. That's just too late for me. Mm. But because of work and everything else, I've been doing that. So I need to get back to my 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Yeah, no, those aren't even my hours, Brandon. I've been doing 
two and three o'clock in the morning this week because sleep pattern sleep pattern's been thrown off. Mm-hmm. Welcome, hey, back. Welcome, back. welcome back. We welcome you. Okay, I am on my phone. I'm on my phone. So this will not be happening again. So she's please. not doing it today. <laughs> so am I? Did y'all already acknowledge the collective care center? Or should I go ahead and do that? No, so we're actually ahead. we're actually still talking about our self care. We're, we're going to do better next mm-hmm. week. Okay, we are finished. You want me to go ahead? No, you can go ahead. Go ahead. We okay. need to get our sleep in check. <laughs> yes, I definitely need to do that. So because of everything going on, we definitely want to highlight a resource that um, is fairly new um i think they opened the collective care center as a um racial and intersectional trauma center um in louisville kentucky and it's located on the campus of spalding university i actually used to work there when i was in graduate school um, my very last year and so it's located at um, 851 south 4th street in louisville kentucky and the phone number is 502 7927011. I'm sure we'll put an insert or something of that information. The director is Dr. Stephen Nifley, who um, is pretty well known in the community. And I think he's growing in popularity because of the work that he does. Um, And so they have individual therapy there and they have uh, therapists of color who um, are heavily supervised by licensed clinicians. And they're trained to address mental health concerns related to many, many things, but um, specifically race-based, oppression-based uh, stress and trauma. So definitely want you all to know about that resource. Look them up on, on Spotting University's website, um, the Collective Care Center, and there's a web page that shows the clinicians who work there um, and what they specialize in. So, um, Brandon, would you like to orient us to the episode? Yes, and, you know, by the notes, it says a light orientation like. <laughs> and you all i will say you all did a great job of not stealing my thunder this week i appreciate, it. I I definitely appreciate that so we are a year and a month yeah about a year and a month into uh into covid and a lot of us are feeling some burnout uh we all may be in different stages of burnout so tonight we're going to be talking about what that actually is. What are some of the stages of burnout? What are ways of coping with that? Are we doing this to ourselves? And are, are our actions actually making it worse for us? And I will go on the record and straight up say that I am suffering from, from a lot of burnout right Burnt. now. Burnt. <laughs> Burnt. Hi, my name is Simone and I have burned it. I'm right. burnt. Right. That's exactly, that's exactly. And I'm burnt. <laughs> I am burnt. I I am definitely burnt. But you know, it's a crazy thing. But I just feel like we are such a resilient people that the sh- in my mind the show's got to go on. Like my kids still got to get raised. I still got to teach my daughter three days out the week. Still got to get my get my son. Still got to work. Still got to provide for the family and everything. So, you know, how do we take care of ourselves? when the show literally still has to go on because it's not like I have three weeks of vacation time that I can just say, you know what, I'm not working this month. I think it's, Tiff might have that, but I don't have that. I mean, even when you're not working, you're still working, you know? Even if you're not from your main job, you still got the side hustle or family stuff or your own stuff. I mean, I just, at this point, I just want like a week to unplug from everything. All Man, the- that's real. But you know, I think, we were talking about at one point how we love, you know, working at home and everything like that. This is now going to give bosses the way to say, oh, there's no, oh, you can't come in today. Oh, just do it at home. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can't, you can't do as far as I think we've opened up a whole new thing for, mm-hmm. for work-life balance, a whole new can of worms for work-life balance. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that for me, the working at home, home is part of the burnout you know because I don't have hours any days without my child at home and so when I do my work I come out of the room and he's right there in Mm -hmm. fact I have come I have opened the door and he's gotten up from his lesson oh oh mommy's at her meeting and so (laughs) bam there it is he's right he's right here right here Mm. (laughs) and Mm. so um I think I'm wondering for you all, like, what does burnout mean to you? Like, how do you know you're experiencing burnout? What's different now than it was 
six months ago or whenever the pre-burnout? I think prior to this, prior to COVID for me, I think I experienced burnout maybe at least once a year. I just like, ah, okay. But for, for me, the difference is it's, it doesn't last as long and it's not as emotional. I mm-hmm. would say burn, this burnout during COVID has moved me to tears at least twice where I just feel like, I don't want to do it no more. I just don't want to. <laughs> yes. You know, where I've just been like really, really there and like not, not knowing why I'm crying, but then just like every, it's just everything. It's just too many things. It's too much stuff. It never stops. There's no hours. There's, you try to set hours and there's projects and there's this pressure to do really well. And it's like, it's just a lot. So I think for me, it looks different um, than, pre-COVID, than pre-COVID because I would say normally, I think normally a person probably gets burnt out every, you know, once every six months, if you're going, 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 I think you do have a day where you're just like, hey, I don't want to do this no more. And then mm-hmm. the next day it's like, okay, reset. I feel better. Let's get back after it. Mm-hmm. But like I know this now it's lasts longer it's a funk and it's a it's an emotional funk for me mm-hmm. I know for, I know for me I feel almost like a candle and with that there's a flame there but you know flickering and you start to see that flame just kind of you know when a wind you know some wind or what air goes it's just one might say uh, candle in the wind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <El> John. <laughs> and so, but, but, you know, it flickers and then you know how it's like it dims down. It goes and out then, sometimes. And then for a second, then it dims down for a second and then it magically like comes back up. Mm-hmm. And then it does that same. I feel like that, that's been me. And I will attest to Tiff, you know, because the three of us, we go hard. Three mm-hmm. of us, we we do we work, we work. It's not just full time jobs. It's you know multiple side hustles as well, and so you, I think it's normal to kind of feel like, oh my gosh, I'm worn out. But this is something that's lasting. This is I know I've been feeling this way for for months at a time, and I'm almost even though my boss is telling me it's not, I mm-hmm. feel like my job performance a little bit is starting to suffer a tad bit as well. And I actually mm-hmm. had a discussion with my boss about it a couple days ago yeah um i thought you when you said the can i thought you were gonna say like burning from both ends or something like that and <laughs> to the end it's about to burn out burning from all sides <laughs> i think that's kind of how <laughs> um you're right it, it feel, it's been very emotional i've had bursts of bout i'll say bouts of random tears um i walk out of the room i'm fine i come back in i'm crying and sean is just is confused like what happened what is going on and it's just like this and I think you're right Tiff like every now and again like once a year whatever you have this like this overwhelming feeling like I don't like what I'm doing I don't feel like I'm any good at it but at this for this period it's been go I feel like it's it's just like a big weight on mm-hmm. my shoulders you know and the work that I do I love and all of a sudden I'm like I don't I don't feel like I'm good at this anymore. I don't mm-hmm. like this anymore. And I know that's not true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I openly talked to my supervisor about it too. I was like, listen, I'm not my best. Um, I don't think it's affecting my work yet. I don't think that my clients notice, but I know right. that something is off. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, that, and they appreciate that, that. That's what I was reassured of. You know, I was, uh, you know, and I started thinking back, I was like, wait a minute, I'm still, I'm still helping patients. Mm-hmm. Still getting, I'm still getting their needs taken care of. Oh, okay, 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 okay. It just, mm-hmm. I just feel like I'm more ineffective now. Even I'm not though happy about not, it. Yeah, yeah I, I told my boss, I was like, listen, I'm used to a certain level of excellence in my job. And right now, I don't feel like I'm hitting that level. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I really feel like mm-hmm. the work from home thing is what it is, be, is because I was explaining before, like when you have that bad day, I can go home, you know, Mm -hmm. I leave my office, I go home, I shake it off, I have a hot shower, have a good workout or whatever, I chalk it up to a bad day, you know, it is what it is, tomorrow's gonna be better, and I leave my home, and I go back into the office, and I try to do harder than I did yesterday, you know, making it better or whatnot, I just don't have anywhere to go after, (laughs) you know, now it's like, it just sits with you, it's like, 
it's like a problem just following you all around the house. Man, it's like you messed home up. Home has become a prison. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Um, so we were kind of doing a little bit of research about this and found some articles and they were just talking about some of the some of the symptoms of uh burnout and i know there's many but these are just some of the ones that they pulled out and i was surprised because i was like oh yeah check check (laughs) (laughs) yeah check check. um (laughs) detachment yes detachment (laughs) like that is real feeling detached from what you're doing or even from your from your loved ones um underwhelmed like just not enjoying what you're doing like this used to be fun this used to be meaningful and now I'm just like blah sense of ineffectiveness escapist behavior feelings that everything is every day is a bad day insomnia poor concentration physical Mm -hmm. symptoms like Mm. headaches chest pains chest pains all over my body (laughs) um (laughs) stomach issues you know so I was like (laughs) not not having too much of the physical symptoms indigestion obsessive uh, diarrhea, diarrhea. <laughs> it's just burnout <laughs> that all of those hit home for me not the physical symptoms but the other ones i mean the escapist behavior oh yeah but you know when i was looking at i, I, article, I think about procrastination but mm. okay, i was looking at the article and, and you know it was talking about the different stages of burnout and you know, yeah, they're, they're gonna have like five, but the first one hit me. The first one's at the honeymoon phase. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that was so me last year because I was like, okay, we we doing this, but you know what? That's fine. You hit in the springtime. I'm gonna go outside and get a run and I'm gonna do some working out outside. You know, my wife was doing, uh, she, was, she took up some gardening. She started planting some shrubs and doing some yard work and everything. And I was taking the kids out and I was like, all right, I'm working. I'm working. My caseload is ramping up, but you know, I'm working. It's fine. I got, now it's just like, I'm still here. Huh. <laughs> huh. All mm-hmm. right. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's just following you around everywhere. You just following, seriously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nowhere to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I, go ahead, Tiff. I was gonna say I experienced all those physical symptoms that you <laughs> that you mentioned. Mm-hmm. I feel it in my body. I feel mm-hmm. I tend to wear my feelings so they turn into like chest pains or you know, yeah, all over my body. Uh, anxiety, headaches, <laughs> insomnia. I've had all of that in the last couple of weeks or so. So it's just like it's just mm-hmm. it's just becoming a lot. Yeah. And you know what? It's, it's like we talked about the different layers. So being at home is a part of the burnout. But then also all of the social media stuff we've been watching and consuming with all the police brutality and violence that's happening, that att- contributes to the burnout because not only does home feel like a prison, but then when you walk out the door, door as a Black person, I don't feel the safest. Oh, yeah. So it's like, we're safe. We're safe. The safest space for me like where I feel calm is literally in my office when I go to the office I'm just like I just sometimes I just sit there (laughs) I just sit there if I have to go pick something up or print something off I'm like this is nice this is a nice (laughs) this is such a nice office (laughs) and then I know like I gotta I can't be gone too long because I gotta help shine with Caden so I gotta get back so it's just like where's the where's the escape Mm-hmm. Tell me, if the teachers were if teachers were 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 grimy, they would definitely start striking now because I don't care. Pay them what they say. Pay them. <laughs> you want double the money? Take it out my taxes. Take it out my check. Take it out. They can have it. <laughs> They're saint. Seriously. I, I was thinking about that when y'all were talking about the camps y'all were going to prepare to send y'all's kids to over the summer, and I was like, ooh, I wish I had the time. I would just open up several camps right now and just take yes. all these parents money because they need somewhere to send their children you can get all my money all- <laughs> i told y'all hi ava hi ava <laughs> ava's not burning no she's not burning at all out. she's she probably <laughs> she's probably a source of the burning <laughs> Right. She's a source. She don't. She don't realize she's a source of that burnout. <laughs> yeah, love them to death. Love, love my, kids. love my kids. Love them. Love them. But they're burning me out. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know, I think that. 
I think so. We were talking about you know the all the other stuff that people of color are dealing with, plus COVID as well. That's another thing for those of us who are still treating the pandemic like it's actually around because mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't go to social events anymore, or if yeah. you do, you have to mask up. And then there's people who don't, mm-hmm. and it's like, can you not? Yeah. <laughs> can you just? So it's just it's hard to find a safe space. That's no that's space. really that's really a hard thing for me because you all know me the social butterfly. I'm I'm out and about. You know, I want to go out to eat. I want to go out. You know church i want to hang out i want to do this i want to go to my people's house and have bonfires we missed out on you know fred normally does a bonfire mm-hmm. you know we that it's just like all of my outlets because life is stressful regardless but all those outlets that we have to kind of cope with it for a lot of us they've just been taken away mm-hmm. yeah for sure yeah tiff do you think you feel it differently like um as a woman because I, I was thinking about jay Jim- and how we are kind of socialized to you know take care of folks and to just keep going and just be strong and not talk about Mm -hmm. burnout (laughs) yes yes I had to apologize to my mom last week because it was just a it was a week I just wasn't I wasn't feeling it and it was a lot of demands on me for work and then a lot of uh family demands as well and it was like I don't know what it is it's like the days I have something I really need to do everybody wants something every not just everybody in my family but everybody who knows me anybody who has my phone number just say I need something and just a question like any things you could google things you could find on your own they just have questions and they want to call and ask me and it was like the fourth call and I was like mom I can't talk to you <laughs> I'm working I have to work I just blew up I was like I have to work and, if, and then I had to write her back and was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to, I didn't want to go off on you. I don't ever want you to think I don't want to help you or anything like that. It was just, I had so much. I yeah. had so much. And I, I wasn't telling, mm-hmm. I wasn't saying anything about it. It was just like, okay, another thing. Okay. Assignment, do another thing. Okay. We got this now, another thing. Somebody needs help. Okay. Another thing. And I just wasn't saying anything to anybody about it because we do this. We've been doing this. You know, we, we got 10 mm-hmm. things to do at once. We keep it rolling. We keep it right. pushing. So it was just like, I feel like as a woman, sometimes I don't get, I don't get the time to stop and say, or if I do, it's like, well, what's wrong? Well, why is that a problem? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Keep it moving, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely, I it just crashed down on me last week. And I was just like, hey, I have to apologize because, and my mm-hmm. mother was real understanding about it. You know, we actually talked and had a good conversation about it. And, you know, so just talking about like taking it easy watching your health, you know, listening to your body, and just stop trying to be everything for everybody. So it was a good, it led to a good conversation, but I was definitely mm-hmm. just like, mm-hmm. I, can, mm-hmm. I can do no more. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'll do that. Like I, I um, have gotten better about setting limits, but then I feel guilty for it. And I mm-hmm. feel like I'm supposed to be doing this. I should be doing this and doing that. Why do I have, you know, Sean doing this? Okay. Now I'm the mother. I should be doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I deal with those shoulds and I'll just, you know, I'll just go cry. I'll go cry mm-hmm. and I'll say, okay, let me just have this. I'll say to myself, I have my 15 minutes or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell myself, okay, you got to come back together. You got to go back out there. You got to go back out there. Mm-hmm. And so then I do, and I feel better after that release, but I think I just deal with that, the guilt. I still feel like I should not be, I don't know affected or if I do if I am affected I feel like I shouldn't show it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is interesting because I'm a psychologist and I, I deal in emotion to feelings but I don't want to feel <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, whole, that's your whole job Simone yeah, yeah, the, psychologist, the psychologist needs psychologists too you know yes. they need a place they and need when place. I get time oh when I get some time <laughs> <laughs> can I volunteer can I do it can we be each other's we can- no no because you don't listen to me so I'm not gonna listen to you <laughs> also don't be young don't be getting uh blown up at my mother okay whatever I know, she I needs. so bad because I'm like I am like whatever whatever my mother needs you know mm-hmm. I am a child that's whatever my mother needs whatever my grandma mm-hmm. needs, they're gonna have it so I felt so bad because I wasn't mad at her for asking me for help I was just mad because it was one more thing and I think she was mm-hmm. like the closest 
yeah. person I could like lash out at because you know I can't get mad at my boss mm-hmm. I mean I can't mm-hmm. yell at my coworkers. I you know you don't want to be the angry black woman in your place of business or anything like that and right, you know, right. trying to take it on your spouse so it's like I feel like I could my mother could handle it or at least you know mm-hmm. like understand it understand it yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. So you still need some help shut up Brandon no uh, my mother needs oh here we go I, I reject all of that I reject Mm-mm. it <laughs> <laughs> moving on since Brandon's going down the, a terrible the path bad, to a bad place <laughs> That's a terrible path. <laughs> do y'all think that we do this to ourselves in a sense like do you think that we ignore the signs mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. make it easier for us to get to this bad place mm-hmm. i see yeah, y'all nodding what, yeah. what, who wants yeah. to go first it's a coping it's a coping thing it's it's you try to avoid it because if you can avoid it it means it's not happening and then next thing you know it's mm-hmm. too late and now and the walls are completely closed in and mm-hmm. it's a wrap for you mm-hmm. i mean i know i do it to myself there's lots of t- lots of things that my friends and my husband tell me I should say no to often. And I don't say no. I'll be like, oh, I can do it. I can find a little bit of time here or there. It's not, it's not that much. It's just a few minutes. It's just a, a, one, a meeting once a month or whatever. And then it starts to just pile up. So I, I mean, I, I willingly walk into some of this on my own. Yeah. That's why I'm glad that we're talking about it. Cause I think that um, if we don't recognize the burnout we get angry and start lashing out at other people you know, without really mm-hmm. knowing like what the root is for that. It's mm-hmm. like, if I know that it's burnout, if I know that this is what I'm feeling and this is why, then I could try to work on that myself instead of like being angry at people or being yeah. rude or crying in the corner for <laughs> days at a time without really knowing why. <laughs> Man, and the stories I could tell about crying and not crying knowing why. In the corner, not knowing why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why I'm What's crying. Wrong? I what don't know. <laughs> This is bad. Just leave me alone. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely. I, I can say I have not had the emotional. Uh, you just wait. It's coming. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I'm sure. I'm sure this is. I, I don't have no shame in. I'm not. To all my guys, I got, I got friends. We cry and everything, but that's just. It just hasn't hit me like that for me. I've just. I'll just retreat. That's my. That's my mechanism. I'll retreat. I'll retreat. I'll go watch a movie. I don't want to be bothered with nobody. Let's let me watch my movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's why i stay up late sometimes i know i should be also, asleep but it's quiet it's yes that's, you know my fair. husband goes to bed early the kid is asleep and i can just be there and i don't necessarily want to sleep my quiet time away i want to yeah. be up like right. just zoning it zoning out um yeah you know i i think that i would argue that when the way that we talk about self-care is in some ways messed up so i grew up um, in a situation where my mom was like oh so she didn't say this but I knew that this like pampering was her way so getting her nails done getting a facial getting a massage nothing wrong with those things but those things are not accessible to everybody um, and I think that one of the things I do to myself is not being consistent with a good routine so mm-hmm. if I say oh I think I a while it was a month ago or maybe longer I did a night at a hotel it was so nice right that was great but that's not going to be a enough a getaway is not going to be enough Mm -hmm. to to cure my my burnout I know that if I go outside and I walk and I you know if somebody would please buy me a bike somebody if I could just get my bike not right now (laughs) (laughs) next year you have a bike next year no I can ride I don't know I don't trust well I just need a bike (laughs) okay well I just need to be outside if I can do that or hike then I will feel better. If I could do that consistently, I'll feel, but if I, but when I feel this way, I don't do the stuff that I know I need to do because I just feel too, too bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if yeah. we could do those things more often, still do your getaway, but I think it's, it's like, how do we be as intentional about taking care of ourselves as we are about our work? Yeah. Cause you have, they're just as important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally, totally agree with that totally agree with that it's, it's it's funny once you get down in that funk for me it's exercise i gotta get a, a get a good workout in at least three four times out the week at least it's helped. that's help but i'm with you simone you know i have as much as i joke about going to bed early and how y'all need to do this and do that it actually kind of sucks for that same reason because 
I feel like, okay, I get up, go to work, take care of the kids, put the kids to bed, and then shortly thereafter, I'm going to bed. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing the whole thing, the same thing over and over again. I understand the benefits of going to bed early and getting up early, but it's just like, man, why can't I? Where's my two hours? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to get my two hours. <laughs> <laughs> it might be at the expense of getting up early the next day, but I'm going I'm to get my two hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I know I, I need... We all know, if I go to bed too early, I wake up at four in the morning, I'll be following y'all mad. Like, I'm up <laughs> at, at four. <laughs> I can't. So I got to go to bed like around 11.30 get up at 7 30 I'm perfect so I can't go too early I gotta I gotta go a little bit later but mm-hmm. I think that um I also wonder too if y'all can if you all can see burnout in your family members and your loved ones like can you tell when they are off kilter mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I don't know I tell Sean that he doesn't do enough to take care of himself mm-hmm. like he doesn't I can't tell if he's having I have no idea he just keeps going. He's a robot. <laughs> he doesn't have robot. to ask him, how are you feeling, Sean? I'm fine. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So I have to really, we'll like, I know we'll like lay on the couch and talk. Like, how, how are you doing? How are things? How are you feeling? I'm feeling this way. So then I can get him to open up a little bit. But I can't really tell when he's, if he's in, I guess he's not having the same feelings as me. I don't know. I, I, it's also hard for me to tell when Joel is because he's a busybody, and I know that when we were when we were not doing much in the beginning of COVID, I don't know if he was burnt out, but I definitely could tell that he was bored. He was so bored. He was like looking for stuff to do, anything to do. What can I do? Can I play for this? Can you? Are you having this? I will come. And I was like, no, we don't need to go to all the things. Stay inside. And now mm-hmm. that things are kind of like uh, becoming, I guess, more normal or, or back to a place where we're open. He's just, he's busy all the time, but I think he likes it that way. Yeah. Um, so I, I, it's hard for me to tell too, because I'm like, only, only way I know the Joel's really burnt out is when he's annoyed, but it takes so much to make him annoyed. Mm. You know, it takes a lot for him to be annoyed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I don't really see it as much. I don't know if he, I don't know if he feels it the way I do, which is probably mm. why he's looking at me weird when I started crying last week. <laughs> oh no, I, I know what my wife She's burnt right now too, so I definitely <laughs> we got a, we got a Costco date <laughs> this weekend for that reason. <laughs> She's burnt, 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 burnt. <laughs> third degree. Yes, absolutely. So it it does feel like um, at least I know y'all said y'all were talking to your supervisor and such about it. I have also talked to my supervisor about this the other day. It does at least feel like other people are experiencing it along with us so that's helpful I mean I know us three talk to each other we're experiencing but I do hear other people in and outside of my workplace um other friends just like just being burnt out being overwhelmed or being exhausted so you know at least it's not just like something that we're isolated and experiencing yep Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think there's a general sense of everybody is feeling a certain way and we're feeling burnt out in some way shape or form I mean you've Mm -hmm. had folks Especially if you're in healthcare, if you're in actually any field, really, because every mm. field is is has been changed, and it's uh, some more have been more ramped up than others as far as what their lows have been. But I think every industry has changed some, and that's that'll lead to extra work, mm-hmm. and more burnout. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think for me, one of the biggest things is the, in addition to the sadness, is the frustration. Like, um, you know, I, I I'll say this as vaguely as I can, but when people ask you are asking things of you and you just think this is a complete waste of my time you know <laughs> normally I would laugh I guess what so-and-so asked me guess what so-and-so at, you know said to me but then I get angry I'm like it's not funny it's, I'm angry you <laughs> you just took 30 minutes of my life I'm like okay Simone bring it down <laughs> I shared with you all some um you know people asked took up some time like are you kidding me you do you know do you know black people are dying in the street very real do you, I, I yeah, didn't yeah. say that but mm-hmm. I wanted to mm-hmm. so so yeah 
And I think the next thing is on there is asking and talking about pandemic fatigue, comparing it to regular fatigue, compared to trauma responses. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> that was so something I wrote. <laughs> exactly. So that was a small note. Sometimes you just know when your friends wrote the notes. <laughs> <laughs> Like we touched on it because we it's just so layered you know yeah. if i don't know how did all this stuff come about all at once it's like the perfect storm mm -hmm. I, think, yeah. I, think, I don't know i think for me i think covid has exposed just how fragile we are our work environments are, are everything. I think COVID has just done an amazing job of doing that. I'm not going to diminish it and this, that, and the other, but I think, I think for a lot of us, we were already feeling a little bit burnt out anyway, but because we could go to the movies and yes. travel and mm -hmm. do some of this stuff, I, I, I'm burnt, but you know what? I have fun this weekend with my homeboy, so it's all good. Now we are that now we are forced to having to deal with some of this stuff. And it's just pulling pulling the curtain back on our fragile, our fragile way of life. But well, we're mm -hmm. constantly working. And you know, if, if you bought into the COVID dream, you gotta have a side hustle in the pandemic. So we got to. <laughs> so <laughs> you're not working your nine to five, you are working a five to nine with, once you're finished with your regular job. Every, everybody's trying to be where the money resides, I guess. I mean, listen. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to be. <laughs> the Bitcoin and the what else is it? There's a lot the of Dodge different coin, things. Doge Doja? Is it Doja? Doge. I don't know. Doge? Okay. The yeah. Doge toy. <laughs> you know. Uh, Oh, this has been the time of you know do something different with yourself get yeah. you some business about some yourself, business about yourself. <laughs> um <laughs> you don't realize how and much I, I love that phrase <laughs> get some business about <laughs> yourself, <laughs> about yourself. <laughs> I've been saying a lot saying that a lot lately yes. um, but that and that's great like I was excited to do that and now I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do that no more. But then I miss the money. So it's like, ugh. And we are trying to be where the money resides. Yeah. Like We're trying to be even... where the money resides. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the midst of house hunting, you got you have to be where the money resides. You gotta be um, where the money resides. You mm -hmm. on paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After you get the house, you're no longer where the no <laughs> whatever the money it's, resides. Like you got your money. Been where the money resides in quite a while. <laughs> Oh man! So somebody wrote the healthy aspects of burnout. Was that Brandon? I feel like that was Brandon. That was the Is it a sign that you need to leave? Why was me? <laughs> Simone just trying to come it wasn't she me. Knows that. <laughs> I'm trying to look at it. Maybe mm, the healthy aspects of burnout. Hmm. <laughs> nope. Maybe it was me. Well, <laughs> I think. It, but I think. I think it does go back to after that. It says, "Is it a sign that you need to leave? Take care of yourself." Blah blah blah. But again, going back to what COVID has revealed, I'm not going to say it's like a healthy aspect, but it's an aspect. Mm -hmm. You know, I think regular burnout, because I'm going to call this, I'm going to refer to this COVID burnout as like supercharged burnout, okay? It's mm -hmm. just like non-COVID is just like regular burnout. So I think in regular burnout, for me, it is a little healthy because I don't want to get complacent. I don't want to get, um, I don't want to fall out of love with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a reality check. I think it's just a chance to reset. Maybe I need to do something differently. Maybe I need to try a different approach. Um, maybe I need to take up a, you know, pick up another little piece as part of my, as part of my job. You know, I guess as Brandon would probably do like certifications or whatever. Maybe I need to learn a new skill within my role as a librarian or whatever to try to like reinvigorate myself for mm -hmm. this. I would say during that time it's healthy like now i just what are you gonna do you're not gonna quit your job and supercharge burnout you're not gonna leave <laughs> right yeah i would say if you are experiencing like you know severe burnout or any type of burnout that it would not be a good idea to make any life-altering big decisions 
not right now i don't think that's a good time because you're not yourself no <laughs> and you you just you know you need to to be in the right state of mind to make a major life change and so for me i think the healthy part of it is just shining a light on the fact that i need better coping skills you know yes. because i'm so dependent on my schedule i'm so dependent on being able to have my me time i never thought in a million years my me time would be taken away from me you know I think about when I would take Kate to school and it was a 45 minute drive the drive but then it was like a 20 minute drive by myself to my yeah. office and I could close my door you know and so how do I recreate that more often um we have a trip coming up which is going to be great but I mean it's going to be the three of us which is it'll be a change of scenery mm-hmm. and that's nice but I can't do that all the time so oh, I don't I would, even call those I don't call those vacations I'm like, oh you're gonna take the family on a family vacation no, we're going on a family trip. Yeah, it's a That's... trip. <laughs> which is <laughs> some Mother's some, Day, which can sometimes be more stressful than staying at home. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So you know, but the change of scenery. We love the water. I love to swim, and it'll be fun. So, mm-hmm. so that's a good thing. But I think in general, like I would love to journal mm-hmm. consistently. Um, I have journals, and I start and I stop. Mm-hmm. I would love to meditate more. There's a whole lot of meditations that are out there, even short ones, um, really like three to five minutes. Cause I'm not a person who can sit there and do that for very long. Cause my mm-hmm. mind wanders, but there's ones that are specifically for people of color, particularly, uh, specifically black people. So I wish I could, I, I'm not gonna say I wish I can, I can do more of that, yes. um, consistently and that will help. So I think it just, the positive aspect that it shined a light on the stuff I wasn't doing for myself yeah so Mm -hmm. sounds like that's moving us to our how do we fix this how do we cope I just told (laughs) you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna meditate (laughs) you know for me I gotta stop being an all or nothing person so Mm -hmm. like Simone like you said earlier uh you went to a hotel for a night and it was great but you had to go gotta go back right so I, I did the same thing. I did the same thing for my birthday. I went to a hotel for a couple of days and that's all well and good, but I thought I was going to be more arrested than I was. Um, that just means I'm so far behind that I need to like every day, like chip away at that. So instead of, instead of just saving and waiting for like when the big stuff can pop, mm-hmm. I, need, I don't need to be like, you know what, Brandon, for real, for real. When you when you clock out for lunch, actually leave the house for lunch. Like yes. go take a, like go take a walk. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, go outside, take a walk. Even if you're by yourself, and just just take a walk by yourself just to get some fresh air instead of being just cooped up in your office all day long. So I mm-hmm. think for me, I have to focus on those small things uh, on a daily. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, what about you? So for me, I tend to have when I'm in these situations of burnout, I have knee jerk reactions of of usually boundary related but like i'm gonna set all these boundaries i'm not gonna answer my phone i'm gonna turn this off i'm not gonna go to this meeting i'm not gonna respond to that or whatever and i usually do that and then it lasts for like a few days and i'll stop doing it because i have this fear i have this fear of missing out i guess i don't know or this fear of somebody really needs me and i didn't respond or whatever um but i will say that i'm trying it this time uh and i haven't gone back off of it yet so putting my phone on do not disturb, doing work, um, not answering things that aren't important, utilizing that preview, you know, without opening the message, you could preview the message and see if it's important or not. And then also just been like texting. Um, so we text a lot throughout the day. We do communicate a lot throughout the day. Having my phone beside me has been a help and a hindrance. So what I have started doing is like when stuff comes up that's important, um, I will text the people who usually text me throughout the day and say, hey, I can't talk to you from like one to three today. Don't text me between one and three. I'm doing something. I have a presentation or I'll be in a meeting Mm -hmm. or whatever. I can talk to you after that, but don't, don't text me between that time, unless it's an emergency, Mm -hmm. only emergency. So I have been doing that and that's been working out fine. So I'm going to try to just keep that small set of boundaries of like, just trying to not be contacted at work, just be at work. Um, Cause it's already hard because I'm not at work. I'm at my, my kitchen table. So I'm right just down the hall for most people <laughs> <laughs> right and that's the crazy thing man just 
15 steps to your new to your new office right mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm telling you when kaden goes to that summer camp which is overpriced but i'm gonna pay <laughs> um <laughs> i'm going to the office i'm going <laughs> when he goes i can go. go and then we can come back home in the evening like we're yeah. supposed to yeah. yeah yeah um but i wanted to touch base back on this meditation thing because i don't know Oh, if y'all do any meditation, but I, it, it's, um, and it, there's a, a website called selfcompassion.org and they just have a lot of different resources around like showing yourself, giving yourself grace, showing self compassion, self compassion. Um, they have a lot of, um, they have what from nine minute to 20 minute meditations. And there's one on here called the loving kindness meditation, the self compassion, loving kindness meditation. Um, and it can be really helpful to kind of just turn that on. You can do it at night. You can do it first thing in the morning, um, just to give yourself a little boost. You know, there's a yeah. lot of research about how helpful meditation can be. Um, maybe the Christians listen like, no, that's for the devil. And it's not, <laughs> it's not from the devil. And if that's the case, you can my... do, there's a Christian meditation thing. Yes. There? There's mm. so many, there's so many Christian based ones you can meditate on the Lord or maybe that just means prayer for you you know maybe that just means prayer having prayer is just a conversation with God that's all it is so I can't meditate I'll go being intentional sleep. about that as well you know what that's what Sean I'm like Sean try this meditation like he's sleep it hadn't even started me. yet and he's knocked out yeah see and, and that's my thing with meditation I'm liable because y'all know me I miss to fall asleep anyway I'm like me and Sean mm -hmm. Hey, it don't matter. It could be a corner on the floor. Give me 30 seconds and lay it out. So that's, I think that's one reason why I haven't thought about meditation. I'm like, man, you give me in a 15 minute meditation. Keep breathing. <laughs> well, done, that's the point though. That's great. I have done it before. I have been sitting in a retreat and been like, oh, we meditating. Okay. <laughs> but thank you. We did that more often though. How calm we are, you know, how, how it helps us to relax. We did that more often. I'm, I'm so, not. This you will lower your blood pressure for sure. Yes. I'm gonna make yes. an argument that sleep is part of meditation. Okay. Especially if it, if it pushed you to sleep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Whoops, I hit play. Sorry. I don't know if y'all heard that. I hit play on one of them. <laughs> um gosh. Uh, Simon trying to get a jump start on that on that bedtime. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey. I ain't mad um so it looks like we oh some you when somebody said, Can you heal in the environment that hurt you? That's deep. So since we're still going through this, can we still heal? Can we still do something about it? I think I think yes. the answer is yes. Yeah. What we're Brandon, saying. Brandon wrote this. I did that. You said that sounds like trauma. I know, right? Like yeah. PTSD. Who hurt you, bro? Cliff <laughs> <laughs> and Simone hurt me every week. It, they hurt my feelings. They they don't value me as a friend. That's just we it, tried it to hurt. kill him off last week. We did. We, we thought kill. we thought he was a goner. <laughs> We thought Brennan was not going to make it. <laughs> he kept asking if I didn't sign, sign important papers and documents. Which... <laughs> well, your wife watches, what is it, investigative ID. She she watches that stuff. I got to make sure to get me okay. out of here. No, it, 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 no I, think, I think you can definitely heal in the same environment that is not so nurturing. I think because we're resilient. Humans are too resilient not to. Mm -hmm. we have many, there are many, 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 many examples of folks being in not so great environments and healing yes but you have to add you're going to have to do one or two things you're going to have to either add something to that environment or you're going to have to take something away it can mm -hmm. be the same environment but it can't yes. be the exact same situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For, yeah it, you have to be active yeah. in your healing active 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 your situation um, is not your yes. no destination whoa <laughs> You know what? You just that sounded like the we're not Randy yeah, Jackson. To America. The past. Yes, yes. The past yeah. is coming to America. Mm. <laughs> when he asked all them ladies to turn around, <laughs> there is a guy. So what? <laughs> That's why people don't fool with church now. Oh these God. false prophets out here in these streets. <laughs> 
anyway, um, are there other things about, I think we've got to the end of our notes. Are there other things y'all want to add about this before we transition to how we're going to take care of ourselves intentionally this week? I just don't want to be burnt no more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Man, I don't. I don't need that. I don't need this in my unburnt life. thyself. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are we gonna do to take care of ourselves? What are we gonna do? Mm. I'm. I'm going to start with the small things. I'm going to start with the small things, and I. I know one thing for me is I'm going to commit to walking outside a couple times because y'all see me in the polos. I rarely go outside. I mean, I go outside. But it's like, it's not like an everyday deal. You know, if my daughter's here, I'll go out. But even when she's not here, I think I'm going to have to start going with the small things and really like. Can you go out? Can you go out in your bunny suit? Yeah, go out in your velveteen <laughs> rabbit sweatshirt. If it's cold enough, no, I can't go out in that. That's for strictly for the house. It might be cold. <laughs> it snowed here in Louisville this week. <laughs> you're right. You're right. It did. I just imagine Brandon Polo on the street. Don't do that. Then somebody might call the police on Brandon. They think he's having a mental breakdown. <laughs> Don't do that, Brandon. <laughs> he's burnt. He's burnt out. Come he's pick him up. Out. Come get him. He's out Come there with him. a with a rabbit hoodie, his shorts on, and flip flops. Don't don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate y'all. Oh my gosh, Tiff, what about you? I'm gonna try to keep my. Um, the little work boundaries I set in place, I'm going to just try it on a week by week basis. So I'm just going to try it again this week going forward. Um, su- Sunday, I'll, I'm going to go to uh, the Speed Art Museum and check out the Breonna Taylor exhibit. Oh, wow. and, okay. uh, mm-hmm. and get some lunch after. It's, it's, I want to see it. So I, I, I mean, I, I like to, I think we should go bear witness to these things. And also, I just, I've become really adamant about not forgetting her. Mm-hmm. Um, especially because it's happened in our city, it seems like my city is just back to the normal things. We're back yeah. to every time we, you know, we, wow. we just we're not on it no more. I mean, it's still, it's still some people out there marching and protesting. I, I appreciate their steadfastness, but I think as a as a collective, um, we're not talking about it anymore. So, you know, mm-hmm. just want to go and show support for that artwork that was put together in the speed art, and then actually enjoy the day with my. Um, my sister and my cousin just, you know, talk and enjoy Sunday. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to try to get in like, uh, I'm gonna try to be more intentional with this meditation because I, I do it in session with people, but I often don't do it myself. And so I want to try one of these, probably, I really like the loving kindness one. Um, and it's about 20 minutes. And so I think I'm gonna try to do that every every maybe at some point maybe the first thing in the morning or maybe at night um and see how I feel I have to do oh so, yeah meditation. that's what I'm gonna do I have to meditate while, mean? I, while I stretch well that that's fine what are yes. you meditating on while you stretch they tell you like it's guided they tell you things like uh oh yeah yeah like you know just like the one you were still for you're doing stuff you're doing stuff with your arms and your hands or whatever just trying to stretch and let all of, let all your feelings out shake it off <laughs> i used to laugh at that before I was like this is stupid but it actually it's well, it makes sense now it does make old. sense <laughs> <that I'm old. laughs> there's a lot like uh doing body scans a progressive muscle relaxation um we could have a whole episode on coping skills i could lead you all in co- you could oh, Tiffany, don't yawn. Could don't you? do that. We'll be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're fine. We're not gonna do that. But that that's that's what I'm gonna do. Um so are we wanting to go on to the all American recap? Do I remember what happened? Yeah, I remember, I remember what happened. Somebody help me. Yeah. <laughs> Seven touchdowns. Could have been eight. Could have been eight. My freaking nerve. Could have been eight. My coach don't put me in I don't want to take that from take him me out. he's take gone me out, coach. Like, what, what better person to take what better person <laughs> what better person to out to you know outdo his record than his child that got on my nerves because then if somebody like, shut up Spencer 
like I would want the next person to break it to be in my family like now you just yeah some random come and break it then none of y'all have it it's just gone (laughs) right right the record's not in the family no more (laughs) right like SMH Spencer um the battle of Simone versus Laura Baker (laughs) I would have taken her out I would have taken her down I would have taken her down in the hospital it's it's the wrong mother did I talk to you privately Excuse me? No. She your said, little friend. She said your little friend. I let your little <laughs> friend <out> here. <laughs> that too. You can go now. <laughs> she can leave. <laughs> the paper was so little. Like just let mama ask her questions. That's all. Uh just yeah. It was that that was bad. That, that was interesting that it came out there. But I don't know. And then I'm still, I still don't think it's going to get annulled because I think I told John the Polos when um, she came to, when the mother came to live and Spencer was like, did y'all know about this? And they was like, yeah. <laughs> and she was like, no one could tell me about the biggest, the biggest day of my son's life. I'm like biggest day. No, biggest mistake, maybe. <laughs> it will be a big mistake. Yeah. These kids do whatever they want, obviously. Yeah, wow. I, don't, I don't see none of these kids. These kids are like 17. I ain't seen them take a test in two seasons. <laughs> they don't go to school. They we write. got one that <laughs> we got one that has dropped out and just has decided to just do music. Coop is like, like I'm and and Coop actually fixed her mouth to ask Spencer's mother, can you talk to my mom? No. <laughs> no, play. Oh, help you drop out? No. No. <laughs> no. You do that. She was like. She's like, I'm sorry, baby. I can't. <laughs> That's not so, gonna yeah. happen. Crazy gonna happen. episode. Yeah. No. Mm-mm. no. Yeah. Curious about what's gonna happen with Jordan now. After is he gonna? Mm-hmm. Is he gonna be depressed? We can't play this year. I still burn for Jordan Baker. I just wanna say that I, I burn for Jordan, even if he's laid up. When he, you know, when his, when his, his little hair, like, when his hair was like swooped over, I was really burning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, that's a good burn. Yeah, I'm not burnt. Not burnt. Just burning. Just burning. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. I burn for Jordan Baker. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I guess we'll end on our burning. Um, is that a good place yes. to stop? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good place to stop um Brent is mortified in terms, by of, burning. <laughs> in terms of gratitude we didn't talk about those um I think I'm just grateful to be talking about this topic because I do think a lot of people are talking about it and it's being normalized and I think that a lot of workplaces I know mine at, um, at least is talking about yeah. how to um help us out how mm. to um you know kind of as we go back into, into the office which is going to be around July I think June or July for us how do we still um keep some of the flexibility that that COVID and remote work has given us how do we kind of keep some of that when we go back so that we don't continue to be you know just run ragged so yeah. that's what I'm grateful for what about y'all go ahead I'm actually thankful for the Marco Polo. I think I've said that before. Mm-hmm. But oh, yeah. I am, I'm definitely, I'm definitely, you know, there are there are about 10 people total who I have regular communication with. And the Marco Polo app, I like it better than te- I should get paid for this. But I like it better <laughs> than text messaging because I, I it's something about just seeing folks and seeing mm-hmm. mannerisms and you know. It's just it's just something about that, and I've missed that. You know, being able to talk to friends through video is a, is great. You know, the three of us we use it. You know, Simone's in Charlotte, uh, Tiff lives like 25, 20, 25 minutes away, and I don't see her very often. We run different ways, mm. and so being able to see them uh, over the course of the of the day and the week is is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're Michael Polo Plus members, so we use all the features. Well, some of us. Ooh. So, so yeah, my my ex, mine expired again. I gotta, I gotta I'm put up a shut up. Come on, please. Do you need another you pass? Need another, you need another free. I, pass. Spent, I have I no more passes. Listen, I didn't spend more money on Amazon today than I have for a whole year for uh, uh, Marco Polo <laughs> Plus. I really no excuse. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's like 50 bucks a year. <laughs> so, yeah, Simone kind of into paying for plus passes. She just terrible yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm thankful for the for the outlets for spaces for spaces like this one where we can talk about it and share and i hope you know our experiences are helpful to others and i'm thankful for the polos where we can talk and also again just that our workplaces are acknowledging um that we're going through things and offering us places to help i know my institution has been offering more of our um employee assistance you know go use that make make use of that they're asking asking thoughtful questions about our mental space how we're feeling um you know and we're I feel like we're all in this together I don't feel like I'm in it alone so I'm thankful for that at least that I feel like we're kind of on the boat together of trying to cope through it and um you know yeah thankful that I have a job to be burnt out about <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That part. very true very true yeah. so I know that <clears throat> this was a um not so heavy topic but I think our next topic um is going to be a little bit heavier um we're gonna be talking about the stuff that we mentioned at the beginning about the um police brutality and we're gonna have a special guest on a return guest so I won't say who it is but um it could get a little spicy it probably will spicy. I'm excited because me and this person we argue we argue <laughs> he always gonna argue with me but that's okay I'm gonna win <laughs> Me and Brandon are just go turn our cameras <laughs> off. <and> right. <laughs> I'm gonna give Tiff a look. Be like, right. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, <laughs> they won't even realize we're gone, Brandon. We just let them talk. <laughs> Thirty minutes later, be like, what? <laughs> All right, well, we did it, guys. We did it in a in an hour and fifteen. Proud hey. of us. Proud of us tonight. Good. Um, yeah so you know i hope y'all tune in next time hope y'all enjoyed this episode and until we come back together please continue to wash your hands in these corona times wear your mask wear amazon your mask. has 60 to 30 yes even if you have your vaccine mask. need some mm. mask, folks. Mm. you said what'd you say about vaccine yeah. simone even if you have your vaccine, you still need to social distance and wear your and wear your mask. Yes, I just want to point um, Brenda and I have. Even if you have your vaccine. We are vaccinated. I go. <laughs> <laughs> so Sean goes tomorrow to get his second shot, and then I go Wednesday to get my second shot. I've already taken the day off because I I just why well, try. <laughs> why try oh, to work why? <laughs> we, we, we ain't do so good so I, we'll, we, we can might be bad about that yeah I yeah, didn't no Brandon did better than me yeah I definitely took the L but I will say most of the time 25% of me being sick is me being a baby so I was probably gassing it up a little bit but I definitely felt sick I sure wasn't gassing it up <laughs> you was gassing it up <laughs> 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 oh wow i hate that i don't want that system i don't yeah. want that Mm-mm. nobody wants that one <laughs> but we're okay well, we definitely need to get off now we've gone into <laughs> different, <lands. laughs> different territory i say all that to say that we're okay so we're okay you know we're, do- we're both doing good um and simone's gonna be fine too so we'll check in see how she's feeling after her second second dose as well so we're out of here guys still want justice for Breonna Taylor still need yeah. that uh, and until we come back together again we remain, remain yours. yours remain yours <laughs> good night everybody bye everyone <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>